Hey, what's up YouTube, Dan the Fix-It Man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm gonna show you how to change your front brake pads on a 2014 Toyota Camry. Now, the first thing I like to do is push the caliper piston back in so that we've got more room for the thicker pad material. And what I usually do is just use a screwdriver or a pry bar and wedge it in this little opening, which will push the caliper piston back inside the caliper, pressing the brake fluid up through the brake line into the master cylinder. So before we do this, it's a good idea to pop the hood and take a look at the master cylinder to make sure that you have enough room for that fluid. All right, so this is our master cylinder reservoir right here. And I can see even without taking off the cap that our fluid level is way down here. So we have plenty of room to be able to push the fluid backwards into the system without overflowing. Now, a lot of people ask me if you need to take the cap off when you do this or before pushing the caliper piston back in, and you do not. I've done it both ways with taking it off or loosening it. There's really no difference in the resistance for me, or at least I didn't feel a difference. Brake fluid absorbs moisture, even the moisture in the air. And so if you take the cap off, you're exposing it to new air or more moisture, and that causes your brake fluid to go bad. So I'm gonna leave the cap on and we can go press that caliper piston back in. So you can just use a small flathead screwdriver, kind of a stout screwdriver or a pry bar works fine too. And you just kind of wedge it in this little opening and slowly pull that towards you. And the caliper will just slide along these slide pins as that piston compresses back in. I'm gonna switch here to this larger pry bar, get a little bit more leverage. You see how easily that pushes back in. Well, I'm just gonna shift it here and wedge in between the rotor and the pad and make sure we get that pushed all the way back in. That looks good. Now we can loosen and remove these two slide pin bolts. Those go into this little slide pin, which has a little hex shape here. And these, a lot of times when you go to loosen them, will spin. So you may need to get an open end wrench on here. So this is a 14 millimeter socket that I'm using on the slide pin bolt. Let's see if we can break it loose. So that one broke loose, no problem. That did not spin, but if it did, you can always just put this open end 17 millimeter wrench on there to hold it steady. Let's see if the bottom one will break loose. Those both broke loose just fine. I think these slide pins are a little stiff, which is why they're not spinning. But sometimes these slide pins will spin even when you're tightening them and you'll need to use an open end 17 millimeter on here. It needs to be a little bit narrower than normal. So you may have to just take a 17 millimeter open end wrench and grind it. I just happen to have that thin profile, which works really well on these. Let's just zip these out real quick. Set those aside. All right, then we can take the caliper off and then I'm just gonna hang it up here. I've got these little caliper hooks. Just gonna put it up here on the coil spring, up out of the way. And then we can pull off these little springs and the old brake pads. This one here had the clip on the bottom. I've seen these on the top and that's where I'm gonna put them. So I think these ones were put on upside down. The other side only had one. And this one has them both on the bottom. We're also just gonna pry out these old abutment clips. And we're gonna clean and regrease these slide pins. Oh yeah, that is pretty stiff. All right, these are kind of stuck in there. A lot of times you can kind of put one finger on the rubber boot here and pull, and there we go. We're just gonna clean these up as best we can, just wiping off all this old grease. And I'm gonna use the slide pin to help get any excess grease out of there. You can see you put it back in maybe one or two more times, and that seems to pull out some more of that old grease. And then this is the new grease I'm using for the slide pins. It's this VersaChem pretty blue color grease. Just brush this on here. Just a nice coat right there. And then we can put this back in. As you pull it back in, you kind of have to squeeze the rubber boot and that burps out the air, but that's already spinning and moving really good. Let's see if we can pull out this bottom one. There we go. This one has a little rubber bushing on the end. Sometimes these will swell and they do need to be changed or you, sometimes you'll just get new slide pins and they come with a new one. But as long as they're not binding up, that's okay to reuse them. I'm gonna do the same thing, just put it in, pull it out again. I'm trying to clean out as much of that old grease as we can. It's kind of an easy, quick way to do it. You can also take these out and use brushes and clean them all out thoroughly with brake clean if it's really bad. And we'll just hit this. Oops, I got way too much grease here. Wipe that off. Just a decent little coating here is really all you need. That's probably a little too much. Uh, let's see how that works. Just kind of spin it as you push it in. And that little rubber piece just kind of pops up onto the shoulder. As long as you squeeze that and burp out any of the excess air, even a little bit of grease here because I put on a little too much. 
as long as they move and spin freely and you don't want them to be pushing outward that just means that there is trapped air or too much grease in there and that will cause your brake pads to drag so just make sure that they're looking just like that these are good to go all right now i'm also going to clean this bracket up before we put that new hardware back on we just want to make sure that our hardware is going to sit flush on there Now before I put the new hardware on, I am going to do just a little dab of this grease in each one of these little recesses. Just kind of keeps that from corroding or rusting. Just be careful here to not get that on the rotor. If you do, just clean it off. This is probably easier to do if you took this bracket off, but I think we'll be alright. Alright, and then we just want to put our new hardware in place. It's just a matter of lining it up, pressing it in. These are a little tricky, just kind of got to line it up, put the inside edge in first, and then we should be able to pull this over. There we go. Now I'm just using this little pry tool to press those in place, kind of easier than your fingers. There we go. I got a little bit of that caliper grease on the rotor, so I'm just wiping that off. All right, now these little clips here are springs. They go on the top of the pad. They have these little recesses on each of the pads. Just line that up and snap those into place. Pretty easy to do. I also like to put just a little bit of this thin layer of this grease on the back of the pads. Now I know the pads get really hot and a lot of this will just melt off, but this does seem to help dampen the vibrations that cause noise. We can put these in at a little bit of an angle. It's almost, it's almost easier to start with the bottom and then you have to push that little spring in in the top. We can do the same with the outside pad. Just get that started, a little bit of an angle, bottom in, press it down and then it should snap into place like so. Little tricky on these springs, just make sure that you get them lined up right. Now when we put on these little V-springs, it's going to want to push the pads apart. You need to have one hand free squeezing them together while you get the caliper down. I'm going to go ahead and unhook the caliper first to clean this up a little bit. Just got a lot of dust and dirt and debris in here. We're just going to brush this off a little bit. And I'm going to hit the outside edges here and the face of the caliper with some of this brake grease. Again, just to kind of cut down on some noise and vibration. And it helps prevent corrosion on here as well. Just make sure that that boot is still in good shape. That looks good. Now I'm going to go ahead and unhook this so that this is ready to go on. I'm just going to prop it here just for a second. Just going to lean it right there just for a second while I get these V-springs in. Again, you're going to have to have one hand pushing the pads together Whoops. while we put these V-springs on. And then carefully put the caliper back over the pads. Make sure when you put the caliper back on that you don't twist this brake line. I've seen people do that before and then their brakes act up. All right, now we can put these caliper slide pin bolts back in. Just get those snugged up with this. And the torque spec that I found online was 25 foot-pounds. And there, that didn't move, so we're okay. There we go. Again, we didn't need to use our open-end wrench, but sometimes these will spin a little bit more, and you'll need to use an open-end wrench to hold that steady while you torque it. Uh, let's get this cleaned up a little bit better. And you're done. In this case, this is just a quick pad slap or a pad swap, but that's all the owner wanted at this time. They said they didn't have any pulsating or vibration when braking, so they, they decided that they wanted to keep the rotors this time and maybe we'll get those resurfaced or swap them out next time. Now, it's important that you step on the brake pedal several times before you drive away, which is going to push the caliper piston back out, pressing those pads up against the rotor where they need to be. Now, when you do this, don't press the brake pedal all the way to the floor as that can damage the seals in your master cylinder. Just press it down halfway several times until it feels firm. And then when you're done with that, don't forget to pop the hood and take a look at the master cylinder. Make sure that that fluid level is where it's supposed to be as well. I hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. I'll get a link in the description to some of the parts and tools used in the video as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.